and um, the last offshoot of the unfilled culture in, um, uh, or the common un unfilled phenomenon in Europe. And I'm going to use a, um, uh, a manuscript in order to stick to time, so I beg your forgiveness for, for that right away. Um, I will first give a short introduction to, to, the, uh, to the Danish unfills at large, and then move on to some of our results from an in-depth analysis of two of these sites. Results of a project undertaken at the, the Museums of Southwest Jutland from 2014 until, until 2017. These sites, uh, the sites of Suhail and Veldbeek, are found down in uh, this area down here, this very concentration of urnfield sites in western Denmark. The Danish urnfields are characterized by cremation graves in turf beneath small uh, hillocks and surrounded by uh, circular ditches. These small ditched hillocks are tightly packed in the urnfields sometimes with burials also found, found in between the hillocks. And you see some of these hillocks here with the, the small uh, ditch uh, enclosures around. Um, the majority of cremations are found in an urn, though other forms of internment do also occur. A few urn fields are still visible in Heathland today, as seen here at Mangehoi. But the vast majority of Denmark has been intensively cultivated. Uh, so today new sites are mainly discovered uh, as level sites, uh, with only burial pits and circular ditches surviving below the topsoil. A situation you can see here on an area photo of the site of Suhele, excavated in advance of gravel extraction in 1996. <coughs> the data set is thus heavily influenced by research, uh, history and preservation. I'm not going to go into detail, but note how many um, excavations have been going on in the last 40 years. Um, and from that, we would think that there would have been a lot of uh, research and publications going on in, in, in the phenomenon. But actually, from 1969 and until we started the project in 2014, no uh, uh, research publications were done at all in the Enfield phenomenon. Uh, they were merely used for typochronological studies. So, at present, we have more than 4,000 uh, registered burial monuments in 66 confirmed urn fields. And these are all dated uh, approximately to 500 to 200 BC. The most urn fields containing 20 to 100 burials, and the two largest containing more than uh, 1,000 each. <coughs> but turning to the project and, and our sites at hand. So, Hale and Velbeck, so Hale at the bottom and Velbeck at the top. Uh, are two middle-sized urn fields, uh, respectively containing uh, 103 and 125 graves. So Hale is by far the best preserved, while Wilbur can contain some, some of the more exotic grave goods, and that's why we chose those two sites from, from our area of responsibility. The project was initially undertaken when we discovered that there were no less than 47 urns from Hale left unexcavated and still in their casts in the museum storage facility where they have, had been since 1996. Using this as leverage, we initiated uh, what ended up as an in-depth analysis of the two most informative of well, these well-preserved uh, uh, fields we had in our area at the Museums of Southwest Jotland. First, uh, let's turn to the osteological analysis, which was done by Lisa Harvey. This is my, not my work. Um, the bones from the two urnfields tell a story of initially very conform ritual cremation and internment. All are incinerated at a temperature uh, of approximately 800 degrees Celsius uh, on what must have been a well-maintained pyre. Compared to many other cremation from late Bronze Age and Iron Age, cremation is done at a very high temperature, which has led to a very good degree of, uh, um, uh, of uh, preservation of individual bones. Even in graves with very small amounts of bones, which occur quite a lot, uh, all charged by the plough, uh, the preservation of bones encountered are good. There are no as sharp edges and solely heat-induced fractures that suggest that they've been interred sh shortly after their cremation. Care has been taken to ensure uh, that no other parts of the pie are interred uh, with the cremated bones. And with all, in all the, uh, the, the graves, we have uh, altogether less than 10 grams of charcoal. Uh, so com compared to other Danish uh, cremation burials, these cremations are undertaken uh, uh, in the own fields seems uh, highly ritualized. So as you see here, all age categories are present. 
in both our infields, with ages ranging from neonate children to uh, just a few months old to an adult woman uh, somewhere abo above uh, 45. A very high proportion of children's graves are found in especially Vetbeck, which is very unusual in a Danish prehistoric context, but actually in good line with we, what with what we see in, in uh, Schleswig-Holstein, uh, just to the south. Um, there are only half as many women identified in the urine fields as there are men, uh, though if we take into account the traits that has been used for the approximate gender at, at determination, men of a prominent physical uh, stature uh, has led to a bias. Thus, gender seems to be equally uh, represented in the burial ground. There are no separation in the urine fields uh, due to gender or age uh, neither, as you will see here, where blue present men, red and women, and uh, green percent children. Rather, children's graves are found uh, with it, with, uh, without a burial monument, but closely associated with a large burial monument containing an adult, as you uh, can see in this picture of uh, in this plan from uh, uh, Suheli. Initially, in the early 5th century uh, BC, the internment is restricted to uh, the urn burials alone. But burial rituals start to, starts to diversify in the late 5th century with urn bone layers containing just parts of a vessel together with a cremated bone and bone layers uh, completely without ceramics but often containing uh, additional uh, uh, adornments uh, from, from, uh, from the dress, uh, dress pins and so on. With the 49 urns from Suheli, we had the opportunity to do thorough documentation and microexcavation, documentation mainly done by a CT scan. This gave a very consistent picture of the internment. Bones were placed horizontally at the bottom of the urn, and dress pins and other personal adornments were placed on the, the top of the layer of bones. You can see, just see dress pins up here. The urns mostly had a secondary infill. Um, I, oh, sorry. <laughs> also take this one just to show. Um, here's another example of the pins placed on top. Uh, uh, and to the left, you see a pin just down here with the yellow, and a small secondary vessel placed bottom up. Um, the urn uh, mostly had a secondary infill of fine sand and humus, and then stones on, on top, which looks uh, pretty much like the results of, of an organic lid that eventually gave in. The placing of personal adornments on top of the bone showed uh, the care that was taken in the internment, a care you can also see in this scan, where we see two ring head pins locked together as they were placed in the to in, on top of the bones uh, uh, within the urn. Now turning to the burial goods, um, <clears throat> the ritualized and fairly constrained nature of the burials, burials is also evident. Apart from the urn, the only goods uh, accompanying the deceased are the occasional uh, secondary vessel, as you saw before, dress pins and belt fittings. Uh, or a few other personal adornments. Um, the only significant difference in distribution between the age uh, um, groups is uh, that small children do not receive burial goods at all, or uh, one uh, has got a, uh, one secondary red vessel. On the other hand, uh, the children and juveniles from the ages between 7 and up to 18 are amongst the most well-equipped graves we have in these burial grounds. Um, and just to give you an impression, we cannot really say, uh, uh, say that there's any difference between uh, the two genders and what they receive uh, uh, in their grave. There has been some discussion to whether urns were specifically produced to be burial containers. In both Suhail and Bekbek, the urns come uh, in two different variants. Most urns are simply reused settlement pots, often shown where at the base uh, and in the interior. But in the early 5th century BC, some urns are made as uh, burial containers specifically. The one urn you see here from Bedbeck is such a container. Common to these is a lack of wear uh, uh, on the base of the urn. Uh, they often have finely smooth surfaces, uh, decorated with bands of ornaments, with a very limited number of motifs. And finally, on three of these, we find the plastic modeling and ornaments showing very stylized faces like Polish uh, 
and northern German phase zones, and the phase zones that we also see to an, uh, some extent in, in late Bronze Age yeah, Denmark. Here's one known uh, exit scene uh, from Bedbeck, the downturned mouth, um, a, an imitated handle with resemblance of a long nose, not that way, um, and uh, which seems to uh, suggest a close association with the stylized face zones from the late Bronze Age, so well presented by Jutta Kneissen. And the small dots uh, in here <coughs> bear some resemblance to a beard and stubble. And yes, this is a burial of an adult male. Um, two more of um, the best preserved examples I've seen here. On the left, a very stylized face zone, again with plastic modeling of a nose. And on the right, you see a normal urn, only decorated with incised lines. But in this case, the urn shows wear at the base, and close examination uh, shows that the incisions had been, made, uh, been done after burning. So in this case, we may be seeing a vessel that is being transformed into an urn by decorating it after years of uh, use in a settlement context. The idea of the urn as a body of clay for the cremated, broken body of an ancestor also finds support uh, in the size of urns as compared to gender and age. Small urns are only used for small children, and large urns are only used for adult males. This is not due to some form of necessity. Um, even the largest individuals interred within the sites could easily have been fitted into a small urn. Here are two examples of bones uh, of adult interred with uh, medium-sized uh, uh, urns. So to my mind, the size of urn is most likely an indirect representation uh, of the body size of the deceased. The same relationship is found in the size of Boyle monument. Uh, he expressed as the diameter of uh, uh, the ring ditch. Adult individuals are most often uh, found in large monuments. Large children are most often found in small monuments and small children are not given a monument at all. And finally, men are on average interred in larger monuments than women. Thus, the size of both urns and burial monuments seems to reflect the size of the individual ancestor interred within. So what we see with these uh, face urns and size of urns and burial monuments looks like uh, the re-embodiment of uh, the fragmented body within and some uh, something that has been discussed in a Central European uh, context as well. In this cyclical making and breaking, we might then expect some breaking of the urns as well. Such a breaking is obvious with the, the urn bone layers, but the ritual activities are more easily documented with well-preserved urn graves. Here it's uh, 76 from Suheli, where one of the handles had been broken off and de deposited down here, below the urn, together with parts of a rim, seen here. From Tohola alone, we can uh, document the deliberate alteration of five urns in, in this fashion. On the cycle of making and breaking, as, uh, uh, we also find uh, evidence of bone retrieval. Here we have bone rusted to these two iron nails up here, and that is the only bone that is found in that uh, urn at all. And it has been, so it, it suggests that it has been, 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 been uh, that all the other bones ha had been uh, removed after uh, uh, the, 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 the beginning of the, of the corrosion of these iron fence. And we can see a lot of these uh, going on with the stones and, um, uh, 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 sorry, <coughs> with the only bone. Um, in addition, nine urn graves from Trehaley were without trace of uh, any burnt bone. Three of these had dresses accessories, just like her X43. Some had oval stones placed at the bottom, and one had a large piece of heat-affected granite uh, placed halfway up the urn with two dress pins. Obviously, uh, the importance placed on ancestors also shown the development and layout of urn fields. Just to look at closely spaced burial monuments of urn fields, we we just looking we're virtually looking at the landscape of ancestors. The, some of the later burial monuments sometimes squeezed in and sometimes intercutting former monuments. Most urn fields such as these as uh, Bilbeck and Mangehoi also incorporate ancient burials into the layout out, or, and almost claiming an, an ancient ancestry line. So, to round up. 
the dating from both big is not that very good, but if the pattern from Sahel is much clearer, both due to better preservation and supporting dating. Here the earliest grapes from the late 6th century are found up here. And, uh, the, 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 and uh, a second group starts to form in the southwest down here in, uh, in the mid-5th century. And the two groups only gradually merge into uh, the 4th century onwards. So in some fields, the multiple groups of biomes uh, very likely representing ancestry lines of families uh, and only in time do they merge into one large boreal community. So, just to highlight our conclusions, in many ways the boreal reflects the community rather than the individuals and highlights a relative, uh, um, a relative, uh, um, what to say, uh, um, uh, the, the, the relations between the individuals more than the individuals in the, in the boreals. And there is an emphasis on ancestral lines, even the trace of retrieval of bones. A retrieval that may indicate a very direct use of the remnants of ancestors in the world of the living, as was just discussed before. This is still work in progress. We are starting a new project where we will try to analyze uh, the largest of the Danish urn fields with more than 1,400 graves. So please feel free to give suggestions to where to go from here. Thank you. Thank you.